Good morning. My name is Scott Redler, Chief Strategic Officer at T3Live.com. And I'm Brittany Umar, and together we bring you Morning Call. Futures are pointing to a lower open this morning uh, as we see some profit taking around the world on talk that the Fed could be getting ready to unwind its massive stimulus program. So if the Fed is getting ready to unwind, QE, what could that do to markets? Well, psychologically, it's going to be the, the first impact. Okay, what does it mean? Does that mean that the market falls apart? Does that mean that they go from 85 billion to 60 billion to 40 billion to 20 billion? Do they go to nothing? How, what's going to happen to rates? There's always what, 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 what? Everyone you know likes to obsess, and since we haven't haven't had really much to obsess about lately in the market, except for new highs every week or so, when you see some headlines about um, toning down QE or taking a foot off the gas pedal or or hints of a future change in policy. You know, everyone has a right to figure to think to themselves, you know, what now? So I think what people have to do is they have to figure out the time frame. If they're a macro investor, staying the course for you, I don't think it matters too much. Stay the course, you know, but you know, learn how to take some trades along the way so you can trade the ranges. For guys like me that are intermediate trend traders, you know, that can make money both ways and are at their computer terminal, you know, most of the day where I'm generating cash flow. I need to see what type of complexion change that will have when it actually takes place instead of just, you know, hints of it. Right. Know your time frame and also look to the markets themselves because no one has the answer. There's tons of speculation about how or when this could happen and no one really knows. Right. So what you want to do is you want to look at the pattern of how we've been trading the market and then see if that changes. And when you see a change, you know, you make adjustments as a market participant. You, you change your strategy and approach a little differently, whether it's the amount of positions you have, whether it's the size in the positions, whether it's, you know, more of a, of a hedge, you know, or maybe even raising some cash. So first things first, you look at the chart. You know, you look at the chart here of the S, this is the SPX, and you will see that ever since November, we've had a, a, a nice macro trend that's been in place that, you know, in the last, I would say, few months of it, didn't even come close to getting tested. Then we had this intermediate trend that you know got tested right here. This was your Italian election fiasco. That was an obsession a while back, created a small correction, not even 4% or so. Then we held higher and went again. Here was your, you know, pushed through the, one of those old highs of 1576 said, you know, led to a small failure. Okay, but what happened here? We held the 50 day, we also held this prior breakout. So the trend on an intermediate level stayed the same somewhat. From here, came back up, went sideways, pushed through this 1597 on the jobs data, and here we are holding higher. So the question is, with all this talk, can we continue to hold higher? So the market will let us know. We're opening down today, so here we are. If we could stay above this 1623, you will see the same type of complexion and speed and composure. If we were to break below this, which we haven't been able to do um, since, you know, just a last week, uh, then perhaps you have the 21 day here, which is 16, 18, and then if that doesn't hold, well, sorry, that's the eight day. Wow, that's how uh, that's how pent up we are. Then you potentially have you know a retest of this you know previous move after the jobs number, which is at 15.97. So as of right now, let's see what happens today. You know, around the world, most indices were I think down not even a half percent. So after the, the nice size move they've had, a half a percent isn't like everyone's running for the exits. Right. And sector rotation continues, and there are nice setups in, in sectors like biotech, which can be somewhat of a tricky sector because we're talking about a lot, a lot of trials, testing, a lot of data out there that can sway stocks. Another example of why it's important to pay attention to the charts. Right. But also know, especially in bios, what's coming up. Are they coming up for an FDA approval? Do they have some kind of study uh, data being released? So, you know, for, for biotechs, you really need to do your homework more. Not saying you don't need to do your homework for the banks or for the, you know, for the transports or the Russell, but here it, it really could be very exciting or you could get some type of blow up that, you know, that, that's hard to recover from. So with bios, if you're a little risk averse, you should use some kind of option strategies. And if you're also risk averse, you know, tend to do a lot of your trading intraday because intraday you do also have, you know, a lot of opportunities. But recently in bios, there's been commitment there. There haven't been that many blow ups. And we did just have a pullback that turned into a buying opportunity within the sector. Yeah, let's take a look at some of those names because Celgene, for one, has been best in breed in the biotech sector and got a nice push on Friday. Yes, and that was after uh, a red dog reversal previously in the week. So this stock that gave us various breakout points, if you take a look here, we've had it in off the charts. We had it off the charts right around here, led to a nice move, you know, not even a correction here, all the way up to this little red dog reversal at the highs. And then what happened? You had to follow through to the downside, went sideways, and then here is where they tried to push it below support, 
and it held the 50-day moving average, which a lot of strong stocks have been holding that 50-day moving average. From there, quick push, held higher, gave you a nice trade there on Friday. Now here we are, close to those highs. So if you know you tactically took some off here on this small outside day, you had the opportunity of doing it again here. And if you don't carry stocks overnight, you also could have just played a nice little breakout above here. So pick the way you want to approach this market because there was a lot of opportunities in, in this you know one end of the range besides the core trade, which could have been around 102. And then there's Biogen, which bounced on Friday and held the prior breakout level of 209. Do you expect continuation today or this week? Well, if some of the leaders like Celgene continue and, and the market you know, absorbs this down open, this one still is just on support. So for those of you who don't like to trade momentum or buy a high and sell it higher, which I wouldn't know why you wouldn't, that's what I like to do. <laughs> but anyway, uh, you might want to buy a dip. And here, here you go. This one you know, had a, also a little bit of a reversal up here after a monster move, came in controlled. This one didn't even see the 50 day, it only sold the 21 day turned up on Friday. So perhaps if it's down a little bit this morning with the futures, look to see if it's viable. If it were to get above Friday's high of 213.38, perhaps, you know, it, it, get, it expands a bit and, and, and pays you, you know, two ways, buying the dip and then playing a little momentum. And Amgen closed up nearly 2% on Friday, helping it to regain its 8 and 21 day moving averages. It closed on highs, so perhaps it should be on our radar for continuation today. Yes, whenever something closes on its highs, you know, with some decent volume, you know, if the futures are lower, not because of what of this particular stock, because, it, you know, the Fed exiting um, its monetary policy or, or a small version of it doesn't really affect Amgen that much. <laughs> so anyway, it could trade on its own, you know, merit, so to speak. So if you look here, I know Sperling is all over this one. He's been trying to target this uh, this this trade right here where it holds support, goes sideways and starts to ignite above it. So if it's down 30, 40 cents, you know what, and retest, uh, just say even, you know, 106 ish, look to see if you could buy that dip. And then if it goes above Friday's high of 106.75, you could see some continuation. So this is something that you should put on, you know, an A list for today's type trade. If it doesn't go positive, then maybe it needs another day. But this is something that we gravitate towards because that's considered a decent setup. Right. And speaking of all those testing and trials that we had mentioned before that can sway these kind of stocks, Gilead saw some nice gains recently after announcing a successful phase two trial of its hepatitis C pill, but now it's seen a controlled pullback since then. It's trying to hold on to those short-term averages. So what level do you think it needs to hold? This is the same thing where you had a, a strong stock pull in, trying to hold support, and we're trying to figure out if this is the support. So here, you know, the range is getting tight. You know, if you, first of all, just go one more time back to Celgene. Here how, you know, you had the tight range, you know, broke below, came back above and went. You know, if you look here on, on this stock, which uh, we were just talking Guild, uh, you know, this also had a, a big gap up, but it was an exhaustion gap that wound up getting filled to the downside. Here's a 21 day. Now, here's your little inside range. It's holding this gap, going sideways. I would say if this were to start to get above 53.15 on some kind of volume, you could see some type of trade, just like you saw in some of its other friends in the group. If it were to go sideways and not, you know, here's your support. So I would say at this particular point, you know, it's getting closer to some type of trade. Keep it on the radar. Again, market holds in there and this group stays in vogue. This should have an opportunity to be a buy, you know, buy in this area or perhaps, you know, I don't know if it's going to hit the 50 day, but um, at this point, here's your three day inside range. That's what I'll navigate off of. Great. And we should also mention Alexian, which Scott noted as a potential breakout above 100 and it went as high as 104 on Friday. Yep, this one different type of trade. We've been this one failed to go with that, the rest of those names a few months ago. So we've been watching and watching, and then finally, you know, on Friday, it you know people that were involved got paid. I know for me, this was kind of frustrating because I had it the day before, <laughs> which you know lately that's why I feel like I'm a half a day ahead or behind things. But anyway, if you look here, you will see you know look at this nice tight upper range. Okay, so with that being said. Here's where it held. It held the 21 day after a nice igniting bar from here. Here's your defined downtrend. And that's why we listed like 99 to 101 as a buy area because if it broke through, if you were short, you had to cover. And if you're looking for a breakout of this lower range that's been under accumulation for a while, there you go. Um, so for me, I, I you know, had it the day before and in here and you know, went through and kind of didn't have power. And I think something happened in the futures. I was at my desk, I cleaned up some positions and lo and behold, the day later, you know, but you did have chart girl, you had some people involved. And it goes to show you that the stock won't remember if you tried to play it in here a few too many times and it didn't work. So when it does go, go with it. It's just ready the day it wants to go, not the day that you think it should go. 
if you learn that lesson, you know, you'll, you'll, get, you'll, you'll, you'll go back to trades that weren't ready on the day that you wanted it. All right. Well, coming up, we're going to go in the trenches with heavily shorted names that have been seeing some nice action recently. But first, a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. I'm Evan Lazarus, Chief Knowledge Officer for T3Live.com. You don't become a great trader by watching videos and taking courses. You become a great trader through live screen time. Accelerate that learning curve by tapping into the experience of seasoned professionals. Currently, we're offering five-day free trials to each of our four mentoring rooms. In the mentoring rooms, we teach our strategies in the context of the live market. To sign up for a free trial, go to the T3Live education page, fill out the form, and get started when the next trading session begins. We hope to see you in one of our mentoring rooms. We're back and going in the trenches with some heavily shorted names that have been seeing some nice action recently. And a good example of that right off the bat is SodaStream, which has a heavy short interest and rose on better than expected earnings recently. Yes, and on Friday with the squeeze that was going on in a lot of these names, it, it had another move. And I'm gonna throw, I'm gonna give a shout out to Vanessa Shout out, you know, sitting there on the desk just to show you how T3 Live tries to help each other. You know, we had soda as a, as a price point in our price point sheet on Thursday for Friday and she helps handle it. And boom, went through it, haven't been watching it, bought some, even I think tweeted about it. And then here you look at the chart, you had another tactical play, knowing this level, knowing that if you, people were short against it, they would cover. So right there, right around this 5675 nice little trade wound up giving you a few percent for cash flow even after coming from all the way down here so anyway these are the type of trades that have been working know your price points and blackberry we know this is a heavily shorted name it traded higher on thursday and friday could we see some upside fall through this week and more shorts getting squeezed i'm so not a believer of blackberry that they're you know but whatever i'm not going to get put my beliefs in it there's a lot of people that don't believe it that's why i think there's a 30 plus percent short interest but anyway i will trade it if volume comes in there was a few different trades there was some news that icon was getting involved some news in a few different spots so if you just look at the chart here i think barons might have had something positive about it this week and i'm not sure but uh, above this 1570 that would be an area that if we can get above with some volume and conviction that's a spot for an act of long. And then if it's gonna really get frisky and break above a more macro area, then here is that level right there. That is about 1660. So this would be buy area number one, especially if it holds above it. And this would be buy area number two and it will need some kind of big power to get through there. But it's on the radar, it could happen. And how about Cliffs Natural Resources? This is a stock that we've been talking about a lot, has a good amount of short interest and had a nice move on Wednesday. And after flagging Thursday and Friday, potentially we could see more to the upside. Yes, this is what's been going on where people are like, okay, what else can go? What else is heavily shorted? What else might be, uh, might be have been punished, you know, unduly, if that's a word. <laughs> so Cleveland Cliffs is something that we put on the radar. If you look at the chart, you know, first level was right here. This was a nice trade. You know, once it went above this, what, 2180? And then look how it held higher. Okay, so with that being said, I think you, if we get another trade through 2357, you could have a move to at least 25 plus, And then at some point, um, that 200 day gets tested. So here is you know, some bigger resistance at this point. It's been a nice trade. I'm still long this one also. And I would say closing on the highs on, on Friday was good. So now if we can get above there, you'll get another squeeze. Look where this stock came from. This stock has been you know, really punished. <laughs> and uh, it was about 100 and change coming all the way down. So this is just you know, the first start of the move. So perhaps if you stick with it, tactically, you can get a move up to about 28. And Walter Energy, another name with a lot of short interest that had a nice move on Wednesday. Another squeeze there coming up. Yeah, this is one of those, again, you know, treasures for trash. If you held through a, a huge decline, which this has seen, you know, it's been in your trash bin. If you got out of it and said, okay, let me look for a setup, you look here at WLT, you know, you'll see a, a massive decline from, well, if you look at it in, in, in hindsight right there, you'll see that uh, this support right there is what broke down way back when. And, and then all the way down, I'm, sh I'm showing a chart, not Brittany's face, but it's okay. She, she beauty's a picture as well. So there you go, all the way down. So now where we're at here, it's showing a little bit better action. You had a, a wide range bar that it broke above right there. You saw some commitment to it. So for a tactical trade, if this were to get above uh, 1981 today and show some relative strength, no reason why this thing can't see a move closer to 22 or 24. Just making sure I get enough face time in yes. today. Right. I don't think anyone complains about that. <laughs> Let's do some quick hits here and talk EQT. For those who maybe want to get involved in the defensive sector, you say this could be a nice setup. Yes, and if you look at the chart here, you will see you know big gap up, 
sideways action. So for this one, if it were to trade above, what is it, 70, you know, 76 and a half, 77 ish, perhaps you get another move. And Las Vegas Sands, so a nice breakout on Friday, possible continuation this week. Yeah, well, well this one, the, I would have liked the entry a little bit closer <laughs> to 57, which is where I entered. You know, if you look at the pattern here, you'll see why. Not because I have great entries, just because, you know, there are spots on patterns to actually go with. So with that being said, here it was right there. But again, it's just consolidated for, you know, multiple weeks. So coming out of it once, you know, you could think that there'd be some continuation here. So if it were to go positive today and trade above 58.23, I don't see any reason why this thing can't be north of 60 relatively quickly. And let's mention Johnson & Johnson trading in a tight range at highs. Could we get a breakout there? This one too, you know, a very quality name that has been consolidating. You look at the chart, not at Britney's face, and you will see that here we are ready to go. Boom, it's been holding higher, perked up a little bit on Friday. So if this were to get above 86-ish, it could see additional gains for cash flow. And finally, let's mention IBM, which rallied off its earnings low to fill the gap. Uh, where's resistance and support now? Well, it right now flagging ahead of the filled gap. So the question is, some people just short something when it fills the gap. Lately, the, 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 the boxes like to push you a little bit further or push the envelope. So if you look here, you will see that, you know, you did have your earnings move lower, a tiny bit of follow through, and then it quickly resumed. This was your real nice trade into the gap. And then now it's it's holding higher, it's flagging again. Um, at this point, you know, if it goes above this uh, 205, perhaps it continues and sees you know the 50-day here at 206. But at this point, it's kind of in the middle of the range, and some might even be looking to to see if there's continuation to the downside. So right now you have a, a mini wedge here. See which way it resolves and. To me, I'm just haven't been trading IBM lately. And finally, Apple. We should mention this one because this could be an interesting week for the stock, being as it's had such a nice move since earnings. We'll have to see if there's real commitment there this week. Yes, this, this has been a pretty fast and furious move post earnings, and everyone's been saying it feels like Apple's different, even, including me, saying that this buyback and the amount of shares that they have on the on the queue to go has been important. You know, I know it went ex dividend, so that took away a little bit of the buying pressure last week. Was your first down week since earnings? So the question is, can you buy this dip, and if you can, where is it from? I nibbled a little bit on the close on Friday. It's down a little today. Um, overall, this was a nice target to sell some if you got involved here at 420. But then now, with it coming in a little bit, you'd like to see where that dip is viable. So right around here, I wouldn't, you know, short term, I really don't want to see it go below 445. Okay, if life is easy today or easier, you know, it'll, it'll stay above 450.49 or if it opens below, it goes positive, starts trading up because that would create a really nice setup to then take out this 465 to 469 for a move to 511. And I'm sure the market, in my opinion, would much rather have Apple, you know, in the game trading, uh, you know, and, and that way versus just rolling over like it did here, <laughs> like it did here, like it did here. So the question is, you know, after all these times where Apple footsteps realize that it rolls over, maybe this time it holds in there. And if it holds in there, you know what? Let's see it go negative to positive today. Well, we do have retail sales coming out this morning at 8.30 a.m. Scott, will you, what will you be paying attention to as you start the first <laughs> trading session of the week? Uh, let's watch you on camera again. <laughs> no, actually, I watch the charts. But, but anyway, with that said, um, you know, I'm coming in with, I think, multiple longs, maybe seven or eight or nine with uh, a few hedges. So I want to see what could go positive potentially today do we get a down six handle or down five handle open and do we go down 10 or 12 which hasn't happened or do we open down six handles you know trading a little bit of a range and, and certain stocks out of perform and certain stocks show relative weakness that's what's been the composure you know so i want to see if that changes so today maybe i'll be able to add to some of the things that i have if they do show relative strength or if you know they, they change and show me something different i'll clean up some positions and uh, i'll be a bit more flexible but as of right now, you know, the, the trend's been your friend, and they always say it is until it's not. But let it not be before you uh, abandon it. All so. right. Well, with that said, happy trading, everyone. Have a great Monday.